Hi, I'm Rowan. Hi, I'm Seth. And this is the 10th episode of In The Zone, Season 2. And today we'll be talking about a most unusual window. Camera. A most unusual camera. You can check it out beforehand if you'd like to, to compare your thoughts with ours. You probably know this by now, but we're gonna spoil the whole thing. Exactly. We open in an apartment. No, no, it's no, a hotel. A hotel, a hotel suite. Sweet. Yes, they specify. Where these um two dumb dumb crooks, D U M uh dash D U M. Yes. Are well, the wife is reading the newspaper. She's the real dumb dumb. The husband not so They're much. They're all dumb dumb. <laughs> yes. She's no, she we'll get there. The real dumb dumb. Who? We'll get there. Okay, exciting. She's reading the newspaper and she's talking about how um, an antique shop was robbed and they have all the stuff there they're reading about themselves. Yeah. The owners of the shop lied about the value of the objects to get more insurance yes. money. They're like, ah, because they're like, uh, two, two Ming, Ming Dynasty. From the Ming Dynasty. He goes, I don't know what dynasty these are, but the short end Ming breaks both of them. That's two glass breaks. They're not totally glass, but, but we'll call it glass. What do you mean they're not totally glass? They're ceramic. Um, <laughs> they, they shattered. Yeah, I'm gonna count it. He's mad that they didn't get anything. He says maybe the whole thing's worth $5.80. $5.80. Which is um, more than $5.80 now. Oh, thank you for that uh, financial insight. Yes, so at least there's that. But there's also a camera. Rod, in his intro, says it's unusual. And then we fade to black, come up, and the guy's looking at the camera. Chester is the but, man in the uh, relationship, and his wife is Paula. He says there's no place to put the film in, there's no place to open up, but there's some crazy foreign writing. So he takes a photo of her at the window, and then he goes back to being mad at her. Because it was her idea to rob yeah. an antique shop. He wanted to do something else. Then, she like, was a terrible actress. So bad. Yes. Not fun to watch. There were there were other terrible actresses. Act, acting. Or not terrible acting. The acting. I would disagree, and I guess we'll get there. The acting across the board I did not think was great. I don't know. You know what? I really liked his performance as Jester. Um, uh, later on there's a third character and we'll talk about their act. And there's also a fourth character who we'll talk about in <laughs> So the photo comes out and it's her standing in a fur coat in front of the window. Smiling. And because she is the stupidest character ever to grace a television screen, <laughs> she doesn't notice it. So he notices it and she goes, are you missing a couple of buttons? Yeah, just like some camera we've not, we now have. Are you missing a couple of buttons? There's no place to put in the film. Oh. Oh. Wow. Ha! So he's mystified by this. He goes, wait a minute, I get it. It's a gag camera. It's like at the carnival. You know, you stand in front of the crazy uh, cardboard. You know, fat lady, guy driving a car, sailor. You know. That was my impersonation. But <laughs> it was it was pretty solid. But you know, it's like, um, you know, a thing where it... It's uh, like you, you have them your at head in something and it never really yes. fits in either. It's like at a photo like, booth, yeah, at Zap Zone, and it's like absurd. Or I'm like you, like you might shove your hat, your face into the side of something's head. Yeah, it's like it's a Google like, Hangout where you look like a puppy. Or it's just like way too big for any human being's head. Right, stuff or like way that. Too small. But in this I'm case, like the, the gag, the so his logic is. The hilarious gag is ha! that you'd be wearing a fur coat. <laughs> Was someone driving a car such a big novelty for people who go to circuses? Seeing someone driving a car and like, it's <laughs> like- Look at me, mom, I'm driving a car. <laughs> <laughs> and a fat person, I don't think they do that now. That's don't kind that of anymore. demeaning. <laughs> yes, it is. Hey, look, I'm <laughs> fat. <laughs> They're like, okay, gag camera, great. They go into the chest, and she finds a fur coat, and because she's an idiot, she doesn't notice anything. She dances around, and she's like, how do I look? Oh my god. Goes right in front of the window, doing oh. the exact same pose. This was so forced. Wait a minute. Aha! That's the fur coat. Later that night, he can't stop thinking about the camera, and it's so weird how she would dismiss it. Like, her dismissal of it makes no sense, you know? It's oh, like, it's I don't get nothing. Yeah, it's like obviously something. I don't know what that's all about. I really don't. And for some reason, I just ripped this. <laughs> okay. For some reason, 
she takes a photo of the door to try to prove to him that it is. The best explanation that I can come up with is he's trying to prove that that was a one-time weird thing. But even so, it's a weird thing. How could that have happened? That's yeah. impossible. I mean, it's just... You're, it's it's so hard to attempt to do this justice. Do what? It's it's just, as a it's, reviewer or as a no. Well, it's so hard just like as a viewer of this to try to right say something that makes it try to make it work legitimate. for you. Yeah, yeah, that's unfair. You shouldn't have to do that. Right. You should tell us what's going on. They do that often. They yeah. do that where they telegraph what's going on. Why couldn't you do it here? Why don't you just give her a good reason to take a picture of her? Why doesn't he go, let me prove it to you, something is going to come through that door, and I'll prove it to you by taking a picture of the door. I'm totally fine with that. However, that Th That's a bad happened. idea. That's that's definitely a bad idea. Because if that's like... All right, thanks. No, like, how would he know that something were to come through that door? Like, if the camera takes that's a photo of something, like, what, it's going to be in five minutes. Well, then, what there if no one came through? There would be a 95% chance. What if no one came through, what no one came through and he went, picture see? <laughs> So then, after he takes the photo, he says, Oh, this might be black magic, and it might be witches. And then... And they're sorcerers. They get... <laughs> they get the photo, and it's her brother, Woodward, coming <coughs> Woodward. through the door. His name is Woodward. She says, he's in jail for breaking and rendering. That can't be him. Maybe it's somebody who looks like Woodward. So now she suddenly believes in the camera, and now he says, No, no one looks like Woodward. So he's saying that... So he believes in the camera, too. But that can't be, because it can't be Woodward. But then... He says that Woodward can't possibly be there. So why did you just say that? Whatever. Woodward comes in. He broke out of prison. Yeah. He wants to stay with him. Ha! Ha! I got with the other guy in the laundry oh. truck. Ha! Oh, yeah, it's me I am the other Woodward. Guy. I gave him the door so he couldn't hear me. Just keep in mind, Woodward, me and another guy, engineered an escape through the laundry truck. Hi, Where'd I'm a prisoner escaping from prison. Who will be my accomplice and help me escape from prison? Oh, Woodward, what are you <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I bet you he would help me out. It has to be... That is a good point. I never thought of that. How could go. this guy have possibly pulled off an escape? <coughs> Wait, did so, he say laundry cart? He, there was a laundry truck. Okay. Well, then he would say, uh... He would get stuck and go, Hey, uh, let me out of here! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, I'm supposed to be quiet all oh, day! <laughs> <laughs> well, but just like hey, how did I get up here? So, so how did Woodward engineer an escape? The, Woodward cannot engineer an escape. So Woodward would have to be helped by the other guy who escaped, who would be out of his mind if he was, what? if he would let Woodward help him. Because Woodward would spill the beans. Yeah. Hey, guess so I'm gonna uh, escape with the. Oh <laughs> no! I wasn't supposed. <laughs> oh no! Woodward would absolutely do that. We should start a Woodward fan club. What would Woodward do? <laughs> yeah, like little bracelets. Ah, we can have bracelets that say, what would Woodward do? <laughs> I wish I had a friend who could make bracelets. I bet you you can customize those online. Yeah, those bet. should be Zoni's so, prices. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah! Oh, let's try it again. They show Woodward the photo, and because he is an idiot, he goes, say, hey, uh, it's me, uh. Look at that, it's me. And then he goes, does like that for a minute until he goes, and this is the <coughs> one funny part of the episode. He goes, uh, like, uh, how come? And then it fakes the black. <laughs> I got the big line, like, where oh. is everybody? And then, how come? like, uh, how come? Which is funny. That's funny. That's funny, dummy humor. Ha ha, you're dummy. <laughs> I, I did find idiot humor kind of funny when it came to Woodward. <laughs> Idea is that Frank called McDonald's as Woodward. <laughs> Hey, uh, so I was trying to, uh, to get a smoothie, and, uh, I was thinking that maybe, you know, I could go to McDonald's and order it and so I could have it. <laughs> like, uh, wait a minute, you know, this is a McDonald's. Oh, no, dang it, Woodward. Gold. And see, that is, that is gold. That is gonna get a rating sky high. Yes. That, too bad Brain Games, the game dropped us right as we were taking off. So we fade to black on that great line. Then it's magically light again. Or that's what I kind of thought. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Maybe it's the next morning or something. 
Well, yeah, they would immediately start talking. They're not going like, uh, Hey, uh, maybe we talk about this tomorrow morning. I gotta get some rest. Uh. I just escaped 100 miles by myself. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> 900. 900. So anyways, Woodward's, Woodward's idea, which makes no sense, is uh, maybe we could uh, sell tickets at the carnival. Uh, that you could get your picture taken. Yeah. Jester's idea is they give it to science or humanity. I don't know how you're supposed to do that exactly. There's, there's a whole joke where it's like, oh, uh, who's science? Who's humanity? Uh huh. Oh, you're dumb. <laughs> Polly goes, you got a leak in your attic. What has humanity ever done for us? Then Woodward goes to watch the TV. There are horse races. Chester gets an idea. And he's like, oh, Woodward, turn well, that off. We'll take a picture of the winning board of the race crack, he says. Polly gets it. Woodward doesn't. So this is what we were talking about, the whole thing of over explaining. They're using Woodward as a thing for the audience members who don't get it, which is dumb. I mean, we get it. Yeah. And even if we don't get it, we'll see them do it. There's no reason for us to get it. Even if we don't get yeah. it, it's like a fun mystery. What are they gonna do? Also, if... What if he just went, I got an idea, and then I cut it down to the racetracks? Wouldn't that make the episode, like, so much more interesting? Has any other episode used people not being smart as a plot device for them? I'm not sure about that. Realize? I don't know. Also, and they play it as comedy, kind of. Yeah. There are so many sacrifices that the Twilight Zone makes for comedy, but and they're expecting that in return they will get humor, but it's not funny. So, for example, like, my problem with The Mighty Casey, these plot points don't make sense, but they feel like they can get away with it because it's funny. Well, no, it's not funny, and yeah. if it, even if it was, you can have stuff that makes sense that's funny. True. So they go to the racetrack after Woodward finally gets it, but then, right before they go, Woodward says, Wait a minute, what about humanity? Chester says, What has humanity ever done for us? Go on! And that's the whole Twilight Zone thing of, um, you know, once they start getting greedy, that's when things go downhill. Yes. The whole Twilight Zone morality play thing yeah. at work here. So they go to the racetrack, and it was at this point I said Woodward is like a natural actor, a comic actor. I think he's good. What? Oh, here's a game of uh, In the Zone. What episode was he in before? Oh, oh. Walking this distance. is tough. Who did he play? Martin. No. Oh. You want one more guess? Was he not in Walking Distance? He was not the lead of an episode. He was probably Just the... Give me the episode? The third biggest... No, I'm not going to give you the episode. Was he in third from the sun? No. Okay. Episode? He was in The Hitchhiker. Was he dead? No, he was the sailor who oh. into her car. That episode is creepy! Which should have won scariest episode, but someone said yes. it when the sky was open. You know was what? Scary. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna make up for that in the Megazonies, because I was wrong. I was wrong about that. The Hitchhiker, and it was up to me. Hitchhiker should have eaten when the sky was open. Time is not history. The pages of history have proved me wrong, but I think that's the only thing I regret. Yeah. At the wrist rack, they take the photo and it says that Tidy 2 is gonna win. And then they look at the stock footage of the horse and then back at the obvious set of a racetrack. Hey, come on, number six. Tiny two. Tiny two. Yeah, come on, tiny two. I quoted him here. One word. Come on, horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, oh, yeah, I'm Woodward. Hey, Aunt Paula. Oh, won't you stop it? Uh... Oh, that's good, that's good. I could, I, I, mean, I could become one of those impression channels where it's like, 150 Twilight Zone accents. What well, else can I do? Hey, where is everybody? I and then, oh, I could, I could do one for the angels. <laughs> Why, you're deaf! Why, I'm just a pigman! Or you could do like, what's the cat? Oh, oh, I could do... I need to that. I got a couple of marbles. I like to play with marbles. Maya, the cat girl. <laughs> <laughs> My name's... Carl answer, and I was born in Frankfurt, Germany. That's all I know. <laughs> it's tough in the old West Sea. I don't like your kind. Uh, Who's that? It? Uh, it's it's from Denton, is it? Is no, it? it's from Execution. He's the oh. guy. And then there's a montage. They win. They win. They win so much money. So then back at the place, she has this huge fur. It's so big. It's like whoa. Did you notice that? Wait, back she has the biggest fur ever oh. once they go back home. I didn't think it was the fur, but like I noticed that. And they, Woodward that has they an awesome suit. Yes. 
And then Chester was like, hey, give me a car or whatever. He's buying a car over yeah. the telephone. Simpler time. Now the French butler guy comes through. Pierre. For the dishes. I don't know if that was really his name or that was like, uh, like, uh, something demeaning they were calling him. Right. So he sees the camera and he's like, what an unusual camera. And Polly goes, oh, you don't know how unusual. He reads the inscription and it says, tend to an owner, cause... Chekhov's crazy foreign writing, so they send him out of there, and they say, they do the math, there must be two pictures left. Wow, they must be so clever. So, but then he's like, how do we know he's telling the truth? And then they, they do this thing where they each like, grab the camera, because they all have their arguments. So, Woodward's idea is sell it. Chester's idea is two more at the races. And Paula's idea is save it for something special. Actually, I think Woodward's, Woodward's idea was closest to the best thing. Yeah, but I then they'd say, hey, there are only two left. Yeah, I don't I don't know about saving one more photo and then I think it. the racetrack thing is a safe way to go. Honestly, I would go with Chester. Yeah, I would go with some more high-stakes racetrack thing. High-stakes poker at a casino. Right. But what are your photos? But, but you yeah, here, just let me get my camera, no big. Let me look at the picture for one sec before we play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little odd. So they fight over the camera, and in their struggle, a photo is accidentally taken. And it's oh, look what he's like, done. Whoa. <laughs> now this thing, this next thing is okay. a little improbable. So yeah. what Casper says is, why is he doing this, Woodward? It's because somebody is trying to do something to her husband. Someone who wants the camera takes out a knife. What a dumb idea. So he goes, ah. You know, what's a, you know what you would do in this situation? What I would do? What? Is I would say, okay, Paula, this is going to happen no matter what. So let's make sure that nothing bad happens. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sit over here. And Paula's going to scream. And Paula's just going to go up for the mirror for an amount of time. And then we'll say, okay, now let's solve this peacefully. Yeah. That is clever so, thinking on my part. Good job. So, uh, I, so they have a knife fight, kind of? Right, right, right. Woodward, so, 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 um, Woodward holds up surprisingly well. Wood <laughs> so they fight a little, and then eventually, like, Woodward stabs, or, um, what's his face? Chester stabs Woodward. I don't think Chester succeeds in stabbing. Or, I don't know. Either way, they just and tussle. then Woodward's trying to go, and then they both fall out of the window! Here's what would have been better if the window was closed, Glass break. Yeah, I know that made me that made me mad. So then she cries, ah, and then she sees the money. Well, we must muddle through these things. Takes the money and like puts it in a paper bag <coughs> or something. And so I think this is sort of a realistic thing because you know she was never attacked. To Chester, not sure Chester was like why they were married. Yeah. There was something early like in the episode that I missed that was like something maybe about she their was, marriage. I feel like maybe she was like. I don't know, just marrying him because he was kind of rich, because he was because he was like a thief. Who he knows? Was a solid thirty years old. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they, yeah, maybe they used to be in love. Maybe something happened. Either way, I think that's that. I buy it that she's, you know, who, uh, I you know, like, he's a dumb, dumb crook. I didn't like her acting though. Like, did she of start out so. and like, cr did she cry a little bit? Yeah, that was, she's like, that was, oh, that, that was badly fake. Maybe it was supposed to be funny. I guess. I have no idea. There are a lot of problems with this episode. There are a lot of plot points that is like, that's a stretch. But this one tops them all. She goes really? out of the window and takes a photo of their corpses. She spends her last photo. Yes, okay, okay, that was... First of all, there's no reason to take a photo of their corpses. Why would you want that? No reason, no reason, Second no way. reason. Like, you have... For the day plot, that's why. You have lots of money. Right. Why don't you just take it with a normal camera? Right. Why don't you just paint an oil pastel drawing or whatever? You were so concerned about what to do with this camera, and then you waste that last photo on dead people. Yeah, I'm not buying it. Then the Frenchman comes in and robs her, and boy, this guy's annoying. He says, how you say? If you police, if you call the police, you, how you get say? yourself into how you say one fantastic bind. How you All right, because he goes to rob her. He says, I'm uh, cleaning you out, and uh, maybe this laundry will be back Thursday. How you say? Or maybe Friday. How or maybe say? never. And then he goes, looks at the photo. All right, and he goes, how you say uh, you dig? Then he looks at the photo. Here, then. Oh, no, he says... Wait a minute, there are more than two bodies. Now this part I think is realistic. He goes to check and see if there are more than two bodies. 
Unfortunately, she trips. I was Over a very conveniently located electrical She falls electrical out of the window and dies. And then he goes, uh, looks at the picture. Yep, more than two bodies. One, two, three, four. Oh my god. And I think because he's a friend to me, he's supposed to be faint of heart. And he faints and he falls out the window. And there's a sound of a horse dying. He goes, oh. <laughs> that is not a human noise. Certainly not. <laughs> oh. So do you, yeah, I think he was supposed to faint. Yeah. How nice. Discussion. So what did you think of this episode? I think the viewers know. Yeah, I think so too. I think... So here's what's good about it. It's kind of entertaining. I think the thing about the over the, the deaths and all that is so over the top that it's... It's kind of fun to watch, I have to say. I guess. Seeing them all fall out of the window, it's just so ridiculous. And then, I feel like Chester's a good actor. I feel like Woodward's a good actor. She is not. The Frenchman is annoying, Pierre, allegedly. Is there anything we need to add about this episode, about how it works? Okay, well, so one of the things is, um, it was an interesting plot idea. It was, like, for sure. Can and I feel like they didn't do a bad job with it. I felt like they did a pretty decent job of, you know, they had a good idea, all, but they did a lot squeezing of... Squeezing out the orange to get all the juice. Yes, so but then uh, they urinated in the glass with the juice. I would say. Right, by killing the, the urinated blood. No. There's so many improbable plot points. Yes. It's dumb. I'm going to give this episode a... <sighs> this is tough. I'm going to give it... It's almost a four. I would have to give it a four and a half. There's something fun about it that keeps me coming back to it. I've seen it a couple of times. Yes. So... I'm going to do a What Would Woodward Do to give my rating. <laughs> I give a four because it's the highest Woodward can go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to give it a ten. But also, oh, I should have done that. Because Woodward probably loves this. Yes, because Woodward, Woodward loves seeing his own death. <laughs> <laughs> falling out of a window in a knife fight. Okay, you got me. Okay. So that's a four, four and a half. Big rating split. Big debate here. Yeah. You know, that's what's really going to get our viewers Like, you, you really liked it a lot, and I thought it was a <laughs> right. lot. I thought it was really bad. So next time we'll be talking about The Night of the Meek, and it'll be a Merry Christmas episode. We should that's write a sequel did. to this just so we can have new Woodward. That's good. But All Woodward is prequel. dead. <laughs> a prequel. I Him breaking out. Hey, uh, can you use the wrong finger? <laughs> hey, uh, can you stop? Hey, why does no one stop? Oh, no. 